God be the glory, great things he has done. When you hear this tune, it means let the Bible speak its own. It comes your way from the Me Champion of Christ, led by Evangelist Richard Akwasi Asamoa. Uh, I was wondering why we are doing English today, but I heard last week that um, just you have an all inclusive program that will benefit. The majority of people uh we are doing a sunday um, edition of let the bible speak also in english so that we will be able to reach out to as many people as possible so today i need to get into my english dictionary so that i'll be able to handle all the proceedings of the day without much ado let's welcome evangelist richard aquesia samoa the ardent liverpool fan for today's program evangelist good afternoon good afternoon papa how are we doing by the grace of the mighty king we're doing okay papa good 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 and uh how, how was church today the church was brilliant everything was very very good mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh what, were, were you the one who gave the message no what what one of my my right hand men your right hand men yeah is yeah. it is it uh mr mesa no not mesa mesa no uh -huh. uh, brother kwesi owusu mensa kwesi kwesi owusu right and and what did the spirit the spirit say through kwesi today well this afternoon the brother was talking about getting ourselves unnecessarily involved with certain things mm -hmm. that's what he was talking about oh we we get ourselves into unnecessary stuff right that's right wow what are some of them well you see the bible tells us we have three things in this world the last of the eye the last of the flesh mm -hmm. and the pride of life okay it says all these three things they're not going to play any role in our salvation so we might as well not get ourselves married to all these things so basically these are some of the things that we deliberated upon at the church auditorium Ah, I see, I see. The lust of the eye, the flesh, and what again? Pride of life. Pride of life. Okay. So which one is the last of the of the eyes? Oh, that one. We talk about that one in much detail when everything is done today. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, when we turn my United over, when we turn them over, then we talk about that one. <laughs> All right then. Evangelist, I'll hand over to you and then uh, through what you have for us today okay right my brothers and sisters let us have a short word of praise our most high king we thank you this afternoon for all the good things that we have done in our lives today you've paved the way for us to come here and deliberate upon issues that can pertain to our future salvation we thank you, we are committing our listeners also into your hands. Bless all of them until the time they become blessings unto others as well. In Christ's name we have prayed, amen. Once again, my brothers and sisters, I would like to express a heartfelt 
gratitude to all my listeners, the studio technicians, and all those who are contributing meaningfully in diverse ways to make sure that this program uh, gets a permanent seat within our lives. And just as we were deliberating upon issues that pertains to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we are here going to continue about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Because just as we the Christians, there's been a lot of misconceptions concerning the way and manner the Holy Spirit even works within our lives as mortals. And because of all these misconceptions, that is the reason why these days we've paved the way for some of these so-called pastors, miracle workers to throw dust in our faces. The Churches of Christ, Bicham Congregation to be precise, we have decided to invest our time, energy and strength and the knowledge, a slice of the knowledge that God Jehovah has given to us because of the love that we have for our fellow listeners to come and sow these seeds on this platform so that in the end, in the end, those who are going to be diligent followers of this program and those who are also going to apply these inscriptions within their lives, definitely they are also going to be the beneficiaries of the crown for which Jesus Christ came to die on the cross. My brothers and sisters, last week before we left this platform we spoke extensively concerning the indwelling holy spirit and the bottom line is you see we were able to indoctrinate ourselves once again last week that after the death of stephen after the death of stephen in Acts chapter 7 the bible tells us all the disciples they scattered abroad because they were afraid to be killed. The only people who were left in the city of Jerusalem, the Bible tells us it was only the apostles. They decided to dwell in the city of Jerusalem. And we were able to find out from the Bible that when Philip went to Samaria, Philip, he had so many converts. But Philip, because he wasn't part of the original 12, the very 12 people that Jesus Christ promised to give them the Holy Spirit, Philip, he wasn't part of the 12. And for that reason, when the need arose for the Holy Spirit to be imparted upon the converts, he decided to throw an open invitation under the feet of the apostles in Jerusalem for them to come and administer all these things that we are so much craving for in our Christian lives. My brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit that we are all the time talking about, we've been able to learn a lot concerning the Holy Spirit on this platform. That the Holy Spirit is not just a mere power that is in the hands of God, but rather we were able to ascertain that the Holy Spirit is also part of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit is also part of the Godhead. So my brothers and sisters, it's like somebody coming to tell you that the Levites in the Old Testament times, they were priests. There is no indication in the Bible that says the Levites, all of them were priests. But what the Bible says or what the Bible teaches is within the Levitical tribe, that was where the Levitical priests were formed. Because the Bible tells us those who were of the lineage of Aaron, they became the priests for the Most High. So the same thing applies to the Holy Spirit that we are talking about here this afternoon. My brothers and my sisters, it is about time that we go to the Bible, we go to the source and let the Bible speak to us. Because at the end of the day, if we decide to speak where the Bible is silent, or we become silent where the Bible speaks, it will be seen as a violation. 
So my brothers and sisters, let us make sure that we become diligent followers of the Bible and study the Bible very, very well. And by so doing, I know very well, I know wholeheartedly that a floodgate of blessings and a floodgate of heaven intuition will be open for all of us. And by so doing, we will be able to cement the bond of affection that we have with Christ Jesus. These days, my brothers and sisters, so many people are claiming these days that they are speaking in tongues. They have the gift of second sight. They can do so many things. But there is one important question that we need to ask those people. Just as the Pharisees decided to go and ask Jesus Christ. Rabbi, we want to find out under what authority do you speak and do you perform all these miracles that we are witnessing? And Jesus Christ also decided to reincriminate them by asking them, was John the Baptist a prophet or he wasn't a prophet? Can you explain this to me? Jesus Christ also decided to reincriminate these people. My brothers and sisters, whenever we come across certain people talking about the gift of second sight, I'm speaking in tongues. I've got this, I've got that. There is one important question that we need to ask those people. Which of the 13 apostles of Jesus Christ did lay his hands on you? This is a $1 million question that we need to ask those people. My brothers and my sisters, we are here this afternoon speaking as oracles of God, Jehovah himself. We are not here trying to antagonize anybody. Neither are we here to throw dust in the faces of anybody. But we are here speaking as oracles of God, Jehovah himself. So this afternoon, we are talking about the indwelling Holy Spirit. Remember in Acts chapter 2, the first Pentecost day after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, there was a social gathering. And that social gathering, the Bible called it Pentecost, the festival of Pentecost. It was being done by the Jewish nation. And just as we all know, it attracted a whole lot of nationalities. They came to see the beauty of the cultural and traditional practices of the nation of Israel. And it was around that time that God Jehovah, through his own intimate wisdom, decided to let the Holy Spirit descend upon the apostles. And when Peter stood in the midst of the multitude and gave that famous sermon, those around, they became so astonished. And for that reason, they questioned among themselves and they decided to question the apostles. Peter, you are saying something that is very, very meaningful. You are saying certain things that are so astonishing. Are you literally telling us that this son, this mere son of a carpenter that we killed, are you telling us that he is now the Messiah. He is the very person who is going to sit in council and judge all human flesh. Is that what you are trying to tell us? If that is the case, then we have done so many things out of sheer ignorance. And just as I keep on telling my listeners, in Romans chapter 2, verse number 12 to 16, the Bible tells us, that ignorance is not an excuse and it has never been an acceptable excuse in matters of the law. These people, the Bible tells us, they became so confused. They needed a window of escape. And God, through Peter, was able to provide that window of escape for these people. And Peter said to them, if you really want to have your freedom, if you really want to be set free under the clutches of the satanic pulse, there is only one thing that you need to do. Give yourselves in baptism. Let us baptize you for remission of the very sins 
that you have done. And in return, you are going to get the Holy Spirit as a gift. The Holy Spirit is going to dwell in you. This was the very message that Peter gave to the very people who were listening to him as at a time. My brothers and sisters, if I happen to be part of the very people who were listening under the feet of Peter during that time, there is one important question that I would have asked Peter and the rest of the apostles. If I get the Holy Spirit, what benefit is it going to be for me in the first place? I've killed somebody. We have done so many things. You are asking us to get ourselves baptized. And for that reason, all the sins are going to be blotted away. All the sins are going to be washed away. That is good enough. And we are hereby telling us that we are going to get the Holy Spirit as a gift. If the Holy Spirit comes and dwells within us, what are some of the benefits? What are we going to get? Remember last week, last two weeks when we congregated on this platform, I was able to tell my listeners that the Holy Spirit does not live in the auditorium where we have put air conditions and all those kind of things. That is not where the Holy Spirit actually lives. But we were able to go through the Bible. We took a simple journey through the Bible and we were able to excavate from the Bible that it is true that the Holy Spirit dwells within us. The Holy Spirit dwells within us. Remember when Apostle Paul went to the city of Athens, he engaged himself in a conversation with the learned and the aristocrats in Athens. And Paul was able to tell them that gone are the days of ignorance. God Jehovah, he decided to overlook all the bad things that people were doing. But these days, the God that we said, he does not dwell in mm -hmm. houses built by men. And for that reason, he has appointed somebody. And through that person, he is going to judge all human flesh in righteousness. And that person is Jesus Christ. So my brothers and sisters, the God that we said, he does not dwell in the church auditorium. God does not dwell in the church auditorium, but rather God, Jehovah, the Bible tells us the Holy Spirit dwells within us. Within our hearts, that is where the Holy Spirit actually dwells. And if the Holy Spirit comes and dwells within us, what are some of the benefits? What is the use of the Holy Spirit in the first place? If we are claiming that the Holy Spirit is going to be the byproduct of the baptism that Peter was recommending to his listeners during that time, what are some of the benefits? My brothers and sisters, what are some of the benefits? We need to find out all these things. In the first place, the Bible tells us God is our Father and He is Spirit. And if we really want to communicate with God, we cannot communicate with our Father anyhow. We cannot choose any language. We cannot speak to Him the way that we want. But rather, we have to be guided by certain principles and certain precepts. It's like going to a palace to go and address the king. There are social protocols that we need to follow. There is somebody in there called the linguist that or somebody called the go-between. We have to speak to such a person before the person also conveys the message to the king. And certain languages or certain technologies, we cannot go and use them when we go to the palaces. 
we have to make sure that we choose our words very, very carefully. Our tone of voice, the very words that we are going to use, and our body language. All these things are part of the protocol. And God Jehovah, the Bible tells us he is our king. He is our king. And if we are going before him in word of praise, the Bible tells us that there are certain things. We need certain guidance. There is somebody who is all the time ready to direct us and to help us for us to choose the right and meaningful ways in order for the gates of heaven to be open for us before our prayers could be heard and answered the way that we want. In Romans chapter number eight, verse number 26, Apostle Paul says something about it. Paul said, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not even know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with grounds that words cannot express. The Bible is telling us that when we get the indwelling Holy Spirit, whenever we go down on our knees, if we really want to communicate with our Father up there, the Holy Spirit is the very person who is going to set our feet on the path of knowledge. The Holy Spirit is the very person who is going to set our feet on the path of righteousness. He is the one who is going to indoctrinate us. He is the one who is going to tell us, and he is the very person who is going to intercede. He is going to direct us. This is what you have to say, and this is how you have to say it. Without the indwelling Holy Spirit, it would have been very difficult for we the mortals even to know how and when even to pray. So I'm here this afternoon charging you that the indwelling Holy Spirit, when we get the indwelling Holy Spirit, first and foremost, it is going to tell us, it is going to direct us how and when we need to pray. That is number one, when the Holy Spirit comes and dwells within us. This is number one benefit, benefit that we are going to get. Let's go to the book of Ephesians, chapter number one, verse number 13, and listen to what Apostle Paul said when he was writing a letter to the Christians in Ephesus. Let's listen to what the Bible actually says. Paul is saying, Ephesians chapter number 1, verse number 13. Paul is saying, And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. The Bible over here is telling us that when we get baptized, apart from the Holy Spirit helping us in our prayers, the Holy Spirit, the Bible tells us that we're going to get a seal. It is going to mark us for us to be easily identified by God, Jehovah himself. You see, when you write a letter and you put a letter in an envelope, you have to seal the envelope. And that very glue, the glue that we are using to seal the envelope, that is the Holy Spirit. Once you put the glue at the edges of the envelope, it protects the letter. And the same thing, that is what the Holy Spirit does for us. Once the Holy Spirit, we get ourselves baptized, we get the Holy Spirit as a seal, and the seal is going to protect us, it is going to insulate us. What is the Holy Spirit going to insulate us from? The Holy Spirit is going to insulate us from the pores of the satanic vices. My brothers and sisters, let's go to the Bible and listen to what the book of James also says concerning this very seal. 
this very protection that we are talking about on this platform. In James chapter number four, yesterday those who came on this platform, we spoke extensively concerning this. James chapter four, verse number four to verse number seven. James is saying, you adulterous people, don't you know that a friendship with the world is hatred toward God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think scripture says without reason that the spirit he caused to live in us envies intensely? But he gives us more grace. That is why the scripture says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Verse number seven. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You see, the Holy Spirit is insulating us from the devil, and the devil is going to flee. He is going to run away from us. It is rather unfortunate these days. Because so many people, they are claiming that they are Christians. They are sitting in the church auditorium all the time. They've not even experienced or they've not been administered with water baptism. And they are claiming that they have the Holy Spirit. And for that reason, they are speaking in tongues. They have the gift of second sight. They can prophesy all the time. My brothers and sisters, this is entirely falsehood. There is no indication whatsoever in the Bible that presupposes that the moment that we become Christians, that is all, we get the Holy Spirit as a gift. The medium through which the Bible says we can get the indwelling Holy Spirit is through water baptism. Through water baptism, my brothers and my sisters. So let us be very careful the way we tend to capsize and turn the Bible upside down just to suit our own selfish means. When you talk about this, we hear so many people telling, saying, oh, the Bible says, God Jehovah has promised us that in the last days, he is going to shower his Holy Spirit upon all human flesh. Then they will be quoting the book of Joel, chapter number two, verse number 28, my brothers and my sisters. That very inscription that was quoted by Joel in Joel chapter 2, verse 28, verse number 32, it was a prophecy. And that prophecy, every prophecy has got a meaning. Mm -hmm. In most cases, the meanings of all the prophecies that has been prophesied in the Bible, they've all got metaphorical meanings. So, and for that reason, before you can even get a clearer intuition you need the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has to help you for you to get a clearer intuition of these very things that we are talking about here. So my brothers and sisters, the ball is in your court. Those who are claiming that they have the gift of second sight, they can do so many things, they can do miracles, they, cause, they have the indwelling Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, they are all falsehood because some of them, for all that we know, they have not been administered with even water baptism, let alone getting the Holy Spirit. So that is basically what we are discussing on the social media handles this afternoon. My brothers and my sisters, we have been able to find out that the Holy Spirit, the moment the Holy Spirit dwells within us, in the first place, it helps us in our prayers for us to choose the right language. And also it will help us or the Holy Spirit helps us for us to do what is right. It is going to, the Holy Spirit 
is also going to insulate us. The Holy Spirit is going to protect us away from the vices of the evil ones. The Bible continues to tell us in 2 Corinthians chapter number 2, the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter number 1, sorry, verse number 21 and verse number 22. Paul's second letter to the Christians in Corinth. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 1, verse number 21 and verse number 22. Let us listen to what the Bible is saying. The Bible is saying, Now it is God who makes us both. Now it is God who makes both of us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us. God Jehovah has anointed us. Set his seal of ownership on us and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Guaranteeing what it is to come. The scriptures this afternoon is also telling us that the Holy Spirit, if we get ourselves baptized, the Holy Spirit, when it comes and dwells within us, God Jehovah by that means, is using the Holy Spirit to anoint us. He is anointing us so that we can get the seal of divine ownership. It means we are not of our own anymore. That is why Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, verse number 17, he said, therefore, if anybody is in Christ, that person is a new creation. All the old things have passed away and everything has become new. Because in the past, we were swearing allegiance to Satan. But now that we have been baptized, the Bible is telling us we have got the Holy Spirit as an anointed gift. We have been anointed with the Holy Spirit. And through that anointing, we've got a seal of divine ownership. We do not have our own free will, but rather we have the godly seal of approval. We belong to Christ. We belong to Christ because the Holy Spirit has been deposited within our hearts. God Jehovah has given us the Holy Spirit. And this is I'm saying, we can only get all these things by only one means, through water baptism. Through water baptism. Mm -hmm. If that is not the case, I don't think Peter wouldn't have told his converts at that time to, that they need to get themselves baptized in order for them to get the Holy Spirit as a gift. So my brothers and my sisters, this evening, if you are listening to this voice of reasoning, place all that I'm urging you to do is go back to the Bible and ascertain all these biblical facts that we are deliberating upon here this afternoon and make sure that you do the need for before it is too late. Because these days, these so-called men of God, they have decided to throw dust in the eyes of their converts. Because they themselves, just as Peter said, Peter said, those people, they themselves, they are slaves, and yet they are promising deliverance to people. How can it be very possible that somebody, we both of us, we are in prison. Both of us, we are under the clutches of Satan and you are coming to promise me that you are going to deliver me. You are going to set me free. How can that be possible? How can that be possible? Just as Peter said, there are so many people 
they themselves, they are slaves, and yet they are promising deliverance to certain people. For all you know, these so-called men of God, just as I keep on saying all the time, most of them, they are under the influence of occultism. The powers that they are claiming to use to do so many things that they are doing these days. Satan can also turn himself to become an angel of light. So we need to be very, very careful about the way and manner we are giving ourselves to be used by these people. We need to be very careful in order not for us to become a prey to the predators out there. Because the Bible tells us Satan is wandering around like a lion, seeking for whom he can get and devour. The Bible is telling us that when we give ourselves to Christ in baptism, we get the Holy Spirit as a gift. You are speaking in tongues. You are claiming that you have the gift of second sight. You are claiming that you have the gift of healing. You have the gift to speak words of wisdom. Which of the 13 apostles of Jesus Christ laid his hands upon you for you to get all these things that we are claiming that we've got? A lot of falsehood is going on, my brothers and sisters. So let us be very careful and open our eyes very, very well. Because we have been able to find out from the Bible that before even we can say earnest prayers, we need the intervention of the Holy Spirit. We need the intervention of the Holy Spirit. If that is not the case, then I don't think that Peter would have told his converts that we need to get ourselves baptized. And after that, you are going to get the Holy Spirit as a gift. You are going to get the indwelling Holy Spirit. And I've said it time with that number on this platform, mm -hmm. that when the Holy Spirit comes and dwells within us, there are so many primary benefits that we are going to get. That is what Paul was able to outline when he was writing to the churches in Galatia. In Galatians chapter number 5, verse number 22, he spoke about love, he spoke about joy, long-suffering, he spoke about so many things. But if indeed you really want to get the secondary gifts of the Holy Spirit, that one was through the laying on of hands of one of the apostles. Just as Apostle Paul said in 2 Timothy 1.6, Paul was trying to tell Timothy for him to reinvigorate himself and stir up the spirit that he received through his laying on of hands. Paul, he laid his hands on so many people and those people, they got the Holy Spirit as a gift and they got mm -hmm. the secondary gifts of the Holy Spirit. They were able to prophesy and they spoke extensively in many or different languages. They spoke in different languages. My brothers and my sisters, Christianity, as I keep on saying, it was ordered after the blueprint of God Jehovah himself. It was God Jehovah himself who orchestrated, who laid the foundation of Christianity. The foundation of Christianity was not laid by any other man. That is why Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 11, Paul said, No foundation can any man be laid either than the one that has already been laid by Christ Jesus. You see, when Paul was making that analogy, he was able to compare with the Christians to go into the building site. When you go to the building site, the foundation has already been laid by the landowner or the landlord. The plumbers, the electricians, the carpenters, the masons, they are there to help erupt the building. And when their duty 
is done. It is the landlord who is going to pay them. The same thing applies to Christianity. When we all became Christians, and those who had a chance for one of the 13 apostles to lay their hands on them, the gifts that they got, they were in diverse ways. Some of them was gift of healing, the gift of interpretation, the gift of second sight. They, you see, they, 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 they had all these things and they were using all these things for the edification of the body of Christ. But these days, you go to certain churches, you see certain young men, certain young ladies standing somewhere, here, ba, 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 here, ba, ba. that's all that they are doing. If you ask them, they say they are speaking in tongues. Tongue speaking, they are speaking in tongues. On a literal sense, let us even assume that what they are doing is even right. Let us assume that they are on the right track. And another important question that they need to answer, which of the 13 apostles laid his hands on them for them to get the indwelling Holy Spirit? The second gifts of the Holy Spirit that we are talking about here, which of the 13 apostles laid his hands on them for them to get that secondary gifts of the Holy Spirit? My brothers and my sisters, let us be very careful because the devil, he is a very cunning person. The devil is wandering around, deceiving a lot of people through the very people that he has hired. I'm talking about the so-called men of God. Most of these people, they are under the influence of occultism. And for that reason, all the things that they are doing, it is not from the heritage of Christ Jesus himself. And if you really want to walk on the path that has been interrupted by God Jehovah and his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, by means of the Holy Spirit, let us make sure that we call Bible things by Bible names and do Bible things by Bible ways. If we do that, I know very well, the banner of Christ will be lifted high. And any time we open our mouth, we can say to God, be the glory. My brothers and sisters, very soon I'm going to invite Papa Smiley for him to come up stage once again. And if you have any grievances, if you have any questions, any comments, feel free to fire them away and we will do our utmost best to entertain all those questions. Lord willing, next week, when we congregate once again on these social media handles, we are going to continue mm -hmm. about the indwelling Holy Spirit. We're going to deliberate more. We're going to dig deep on this very assertion that we are deliberating upon on these handles because a lot of misconceptions are going on. And it's about time that we have to be bold enough and grab the bull by the horn. Papa Smiley, over to you. Let's reach it out see Asamwa for your boldness in letting us know what the Bible says about the indwelling Holy Spirit. Now is the time for your questions, your contributions, or what have you. Uh, for the very ones who are watching us live on Facebook, it's Richard Asamoa. Uh, on his Facebook wall, we are streaming the live, 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 live. Pass your questions and your comments there, and we will certainly address those concerns for you. Let's uh, recognize some of our viewers on Facebook. We have Nanapuku. Uh, we have um, Odo Grace, uh, Odo and Grace. Wow, love Grace, isn't it? <laughs> Isaac Mesa never misses, yes. Also, there with us, and we have Ojo, uh, Adele, Adele. 
Aden Adenye. Adenle. Adenle. Oh, na Nigerian, right? Yes. Oh, okay. It's, uh, right. it's um, Nigerian, but he was born in Ghana. In Ghana, okay. He's so my he personal speak. friend. Oh, he can speak to you, right? Okay. Very, very well. Better than you. <laughs> yes, I'm happy he can speak better than me. Yes, I'm still improving. Well, we acknowledge um, your listenership. And, um, we know uh, you are also equally sharing the message across all platforms for everyone to also enjoy. Uh, I have I've gotten a question here from Nanapuku. If the Holy Spirit does not leave at church auditorium, then what is the church assembly for? And the Holy Spirit dwell in someone who appears to have pure heart, but refuses to engage in church assembly, goes with this popular saying, That is a question from Nanapoku. So, evangelist, please address this one for Nanapoku for me. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. Right. If we are saying that the Holy Spirit does not dwell in the church auditorium, then what is the church assembly for in the first place? Okay, let's go to the Bible, the book of Hebrews chapter number 10. The book of Hebrews chapter number 10, verse number 25. Because over here, we are doing a very important spiritual exercise. So we have to make sure that we got all our sessions Everything that we are deliberating upon here, we make sure that we quote everything from the Bible. The importance of church assembly. The Bible is telling us, Hebrews 10, 25, it reads, Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. The Bible is telling us over here that when we meet, I'm talking about corporate assembly. When we meet, we encourage one another. We speak to one another. We deliberate upon the messages of Christ. That is the purpose of corporate assembly. And secondly, the Holy Spirit, or, or is it, can the Holy Spirit dwell in someone who appears to have pure heart but refuses to engage in church assembly? The answer is no. The answer is no. Because at the end of the day, the moment we are fellowshipping with one another, it is true that means that we can draw strength from one another it is through that medium through which we will be able to indoctrinate ourselves. It is through that medium through which, that we can easily identify the weaker vessels amongst us so that those who are strong can also help and encourage the weak people. The Holy Spirit does not dwell in the church auditorium. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 16. To verse number 19. Let's listen to what Paul said. Paul is saying, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is sacred and you are the temple. And you are the temple of God. That is basically what Paul said in First Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 16 to verse number 17. And let us read something again from the same book of Corinthians, chapter number 6. This time we're moving to chapter number 6. We are reading from verse number 19 and verse number 20. Paul is saying, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God. You are not on your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. You see, 
these two Bible references is giving us a firm grip on the very assertion that the Holy Spirit does not dwell in the buildings built by men. The final one that I can also add to what Nanapuku is asking is as chapter number 17. I think during my deliberation, I spoke about that one. When Paul went to Athens, he engaged himself in a dialogue with the learned people, the aristocrats in Athens. And Paul said, the God who made verse number Acts chapter 17, verse number 24. He said, the God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands. God does not live in temples built by human hands. So the answer is very, very simple. We meet in the church auditorium to draw strength and also to encourage ourselves. But that is not the dwelling place of God. The dwelling place of the Holy Spirit is our hearts. That is what the Bible actually says. Baba Smiley, over to you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Um, well, I, I was much interested in the, I think, the second part uh, of, of his question. Um, can the Holy Spirit dwell in someone who appears to have pure heart, but refuses to engage in um, church assembly? Evangelist, help us. What does the pure heart of man... That, that, that is exactly what I was going to mm -hmm. ask him to explain. Mm -hmm. If you say pure heart, mm -hmm. pure heart means more or less, more or less, in quote somebody who has decided to stay away from willful sinning. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? From willful sinning. Right. If somebody decides to stay away from willful sinning, that doesn't mean such a person has got a pure heart. Because at the end of the day, it is not anything strange. I'm saying this on the basis of the fact that when God Jehovah created we the human beings, he gave us some of his attributes. That is the reason why Cain, when he killed his brother Abel, there was no law, there was no law written in the Bible during that time that thou shalt not kill. But as soon as he did that, he felt very well that he has done something that was very, very outrageous in the sight of God. You see? So the only way through which we can get a pure and a clean heart, you see what I mean, is to get ourselves buried in the watery grave of baptism of Christ. And through that, just as we have lamented here this afternoon, we are going to get the Holy Spirit as a gift. We're going to get the Holy Spirit as a seal, and the Holy Spirit is going to insulate and protect us against any vices of the evil one. So if somebody decides to do what is good, it is not a strange thing because when you go to Acts chapter 10, there was one man, that man, he wasn't a Christian. But the Bible tells us his prayers, God, Jehovah, was able to hear his prayers. Let me read something small for you to see. In Acts chapter 10, verse number 1, the Bible says at Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian regiment. He was an Italian. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. You see? The Bible, when you read further down, the Bible will tell you because of the good things, he had a good heart. He had a pure heart. And yes, so he wasn't a Christian. You see, all the good things that he was doing, it went up there to become a memorial. And God saw and he felt all those good things. And God sent Peter to go and show him the right door. Not until he became a Christian and got himself baptized, 
there was no way that this man he would have been found favor or favored in the sight of Christ Jesus. That is basically what the Bible says. So the fact that you have a clean heart, those who do not even go to church, they all know how to do good things. You see what I mean? Because I've said time or that number that going to sit in the church auditorium, it doesn't make you a Christian. Because we have adulterous people sitting in our church auditoriums. Certain people, they have strong affiliation with occultic practices. They are sitting in the church auditorium. We've got people whose veins are not ready to receive an iota of forgiveness within their veins. Those people that are also living or sitting in the church auditorium. You see? So before we can say somebody is a Christian, somebody who has decided to give himself to Christ in baptism and has decided to walk according to the ordinances of God Jehovah. Over to you, Papa Smiley. Well, uh, you've done you've done your bit just to let us understand. Uh, Madam, please support us a little bit here. Uh, how would we know um, between two people who are doing very well, promoting life, supporting everyone, you know, being good to humanity? How would we know that this person is doing it out of the presence of the Holy Spirit in him and this one is doing it, although doing it, but the Holy Spirit is not in that person? Okay. Papa Smiley, let me is ask it, you one question. Okay. Yeah. Is it? Is, okay. Uh, All right. For instance, um, for yeah. instance, yeah. you and your younger brother, Daniel, let's say, for instance, the two of you, you are arguing about something, that there is an um, um, electric wire lying down somewhere, a bare electric wire. Mm -hmm. You will be saying that there is power. The wire is life. Mm -hmm. And Daniel is also saying, no, there is no life. There is no okay. power in the life. Nice. Mm -hmm. How are we going to test and find out, or how are we going to ascertain that there is power in the line or there is no power? How are we going to do that? Uh, we need a tester. We need a tester. Mm -hmm. very, very simple. The tester that we can use to find out whether these two people, what they are doing, whether this guy is fake or genuine, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's the works that they are going to do. Because the Bible tells us every good tree bear good fruits mm -hmm. and over here you are saying that both of them are doing good things they are doing wonderful things right but there is a saying that the end the end do what justifies the means, the means. that's what they say mm -hmm. yes the end at the end of the day if one of them if what one of them is doing is fake eventually the end result is going to be very, very disastrous. How, how, how can one doing good... Let, let, me, let me finish. Uh -huh. The reason why, what I'm saying this is, there are certain people, they have gone out there to get sack our money. They've got money, sack our money, and they are becoming philanthropists. They're doing good to certain people. But the fact that you are doing those good things doesn't mean that what you are doing is well placing in the sight of God because the source of that money, the source of that wealth is deeply rooted under the satanic pulse. <laughs> you see what I mean? So at the end of the day, mm -hmm. those good things that you are doing, it is not going to yield any dividends for you mm -hmm. eventually. Even though you are doing good things, but the source of that wealth where is the source of that wealth? You see? Mm -hmm. So uh, that is why we say not all that glitters is gold. You see what I mean? Not all that, that glitters is gold. Mm -hmm. Some of them, even the Bible tells us, Satan himself, Satan, sometimes he can parade himself as an angel of light. Okay. Satan himself can parade himself as an angel of light. So we need to be very careful. All right. Um, I, I'm very certain you are not saying all the people who are doing good 
I'm not. Yeah. That's not what I'm saying. Uh -huh. no. So, so, so that was an extreme. So, how about the very ones who are doing good without the Sakawa money? What I'm saying, I, I said, if you you keep you allow me to repeat myself. No. What I'm saying is, when God created us, uh -huh. He created us as perfect, faultless. So, so, so what I, what I want to understand is, mm -hmm. these two people they are doing good, they are doing wonderful. How would we know that this one is just by mere presence of? The fact that God created us in his, in his image and his likeness. That is why he's doing that. And this person is doing it because the Holy Spirit is in them. That is what I want to know. The difference. Okay. What, what I'm saying is, I've, I've told you, you that mm -hmm. the end result or the byproduct of the mm -hmm. very thing that those people are doing, you see, that is the only time that we'll be able to ascertain that oh, all the noise that Papa Smiley was making it was through this means that he became rich. You see, there are so many things going on in this world that you and I, there is no way we will be able to find out the, the very foundation upon which all those things were built. That is the reason why the Bible is saying, God Jehovah is saying, we have to leave everything in his hands. Because at the end of the day, the judgment day, the good things that you are doing, the bad things that I'm also doing, we are all going to get a just recompense of our actions because well, there are so many things that we there is no way that we'll be able to find out until the final day that is the reason why we keep on advising and encouraging ourselves for us to make sure that we stay on the radar of god for him to direct our thoughts and our paths thank you very much thank you very much and the last bit of the question uh, just a little bit light on that, and we can we can close. Nyamisum uh, dear, no ano akumam. What 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 is nyamisum? Godliness, godliness. You see, if somebody says nyamisum dear, no ano akumam, to a certain degree, to a certain degree, I agree. You see, because we worship God in spirit. Remember the conversation that took place between Jesus Christ and the Samaritan woman. Christ said, God is spirit. John chapter 4, verse 24. God is spirit. So who worship those of anybody who decides to worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You see? So it is true. Certain people, like I said, certain people, they parade themselves as angels of light. They go and sit in the church auditorium open and praying that they're doing so many things just to place their fellow mortals. You see, but the God that we serve, he sees what lies within our hearts. You see, so if somebody comes and tells you, oh, I don't have to go to church. I don't have to go to this place to become a Christian. I can stay at home and do good things and pray and this and this and that so that I can become a Christian. That very assertion, it is wrong. Because during the early stages of Christianity, the foundation has already been laid. The apostles, they were meeting daily. Acts chapter 2, verse number 42. The Bible tells us they were meeting. Corporate assembly was taking place. So if somebody comes and tells you that that is a falsehood, it's a misconception. You see what I mean? We have to meet on a corporate level. We sing we pray, we study the Bible together. All those things are some of the prerequisites of Christianity. So if we decide to toe a line that we know very well, it is going to suit our own selfish means. It means we are deceiving ourselves. That is not what the Bible actually says. Thank you very much, Papa Smiley. All right. Thank you, Evangelist, for that explanation. I hope... And Anapoku will be satisfied with it. Uh, and um, if not, he will continue to do his research into um, the answers Evangelist is given unto us and make up his own mind. Well, Evangelist, before we yes. run up, uh, shall we listen to our signature tune once again yes. before, before we go? Yes, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. 
our most high king we thank you once again this evening when we congregated on this line we came and we sought for your direction and your protection by your grace we've been able to bring the curtains down and we say to god be the glory we are here this afternoon ushering all all of us under your umbrella of love for you to protect us against the devices of the satanic pulse. Papa Smiley and the studio technicians, they are all in your hands. Continue to bless them so that the work that they are doing, it can yield good dividends for them. And in the end, all of us can be the beneficiaries of their handiwork. We thank you, Lord. The listeners are in your hands. Bless them and let them have a fruitful weekend. In Christ's name that we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Evangelist. We come again Saturday and on Sunday. Thank you very much. Bye bye. 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 Thank you.